Hi, I'm Jill from the DIY and home decor blog, timeonourhands.com. Thanks for watching this video. I'm still working on modernizing my kitchen and I have a few videos coming up this summer to share how I'm building a new kitchen island with waterfall countertop and kitchen table combination. If you'd like to see a video how I modernized my old oak kitchen cabinets by veneering and building new modern simple doors for them. I'll leave a link in the upper left hand corner to that video. This week I've been painting the walls of my bedroom and as I was painting I realized how much faster I've got it, gotten at painting over the past five years having painted every surface in my house. And I wanted to share my favorite tricks to make painting the interior of your house faster and easier. Here they are. Getting ready to paint takes twice as long as actually painting a room, but it's twice as important. If you prepare any surface that you're about to paint correctly, your project is guaranteed to turn out 100% better than if you just start throwing paint on it. To help make painting the interior of my home easier and more successful, I follow these preparation steps. Move furniture away from the surface that you're painting either to the other side of the room or another room entirely to give you plenty of room to work. Remove everything from the surface that you're painting. For instance, if you're painting the walls, remove wall art, electric outlet covers, and curtain rods, etc. Dust and or clean the surface you're about to paint. To paint the walls, ceilings, trim on the interior of my home, I usually just dust to remove any cobwebs or debris that could get stuck to the wall in the paint. If there's obvious soiling of the surface, I clean with soap and water and let it dry completely. Use painter's tape and or plastic to protect anything you don't want to get paint on. Always take the time to move things out of the way and put down plastic to protect the floors or objects that you can't move to avoid getting paint on them. Don't be a crazy tape person. When I first started painting the interior of my, my home, I had painter's tape from one end of a room to the other. Then I realized that there's a time and place for tape. If you have a good angled brush and are careful, you can easily paint around doors and windows and without even taping everything. And believe it or not, it will look better than if you taped it. I always use the frog tape for painter's tape. It does cost a little more than the blue stuff, but it works better and is worth it. As you can see in this video, I taped around this door just on the edge that was way too close for me to sneak a brush in there and get a clean look. And then I also ta did tape around this other window casing. Um, just to make sure that I didn't get any tape on the window. But that's all that I taped in this room on this side when I was painting. I know you may not want to hear this because it means it will take a little longer to paint, but sometimes you do need to use primer when painting the interior of your home. I know they do have some fantastic paints out there these days that they say guarantee one coat of paint coverage, but that does not always work. One reason that you might want to consider using a primer when painting the interior of your home is when going from a dark color to a light color. For instance, I relearned this lesson when I painted my bathroom last summer. I was painting it white over what I thought was a light gray. When I painted the same white over the same gray in my bedroom this week, it worked a lot better when I used a primer first to create a lighter surface to paint my white onto. Good paint brushes aren't cheap, but they are worth it. And they'll last a really long time if you take care of them and clean them. More on that in one of my next painting tricks. Always use a good quality brush when painting the interior of your home. The higher quality bristles will give you better and more even coverage. And a nice paintbrush will make it so easy to paint edges around doors and windows without even using painter's tape. 
My favorite brush is a Zebra 2-inch angled paintbrush. Other favorite brands of paintbrushes to use are Worcester and Purdy. I find I can paint almost anything well with a 2.5 inch paintbrush, and I almost exclusively use angled brushes that make it so easy to cut in along edges and get straight lines without using painter's tape. When you do use painter's tape, it comes off more easily when the paint is still wet. Right after you've completely finished any coats of paint that you're applying to your project, so you're completely done painting, Carefully remove any painter's tape that you applied. Clean your paintbrushes when you're done using them so you can use them on your next project. To clean latex paint from a paintbrush, use or wipe off as much of the paint as you can from the paintbrush. Then, run water over the brush until the water coming out of the brush runs mostly clear. Next, squeeze out as much water as you can from the brush and apply a drop of dish soap to the brush and work it into the brush. After that, use a scrub brush to scrub the paint from the head of the bristles to the ends of the bristles to get any of that extra dried paint off of the outside of the brush and the bristles. Rinse the brush again under running water and squeeze as much water as you can out. Let the brush air dry and then store it in the cardboard box it came in to help protect the bristles and keep it shape. I don't know what planet I've been on. I've been painting the interior of my house off and on for the past five years and I just last week bought a paint can with a pourable lid. It's genius and it's plastic even more genius. I definitely recommend getting paint in plastic cans if possible and with pourable lids. It is so much easier to pour the paint out of the can without making a mess and wasting paint and easier to open the, past, the plastic paint can lids. Most of the time when you paint something in your home, you have to do more than one coat of paint. Or maybe you start painting and then you don't have time to finish because you have something else you need to go do and can't get back to painting for several hours or days. When I'm using latex paint, I need to stop painting, but still need to finish the painting project I'm working on hours or days later, I throw my roller, paintbrush, and paint tray in a garbage bag. I get as much air out of the bag as I can and then I twist it up really tightly and I throw it in my refrigerator. Then, when I have time to paint again, I just take the bag of supplies out of the refrigerator, take the supplies out of the bag, and then I use them like I usually would. It saves paint, supplies, and time because you get to reuse the paintbrush, roller, and tray when you're ready to work on your paint project. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give us a like down below. If you'd like to see more of our DIY and home decor videos, then please subscribe to our channel. What's your favorite trick to make painting easier and faster? Leave your answer in the comment section down below. I guess that's it for today. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.